Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new here. I'm Jen. This is Bookmarked by Jen, and we're here to do the end of month, no, my end of month wrap up for August. Well, here we are at the end of August, so that only means one thing. We need to do the end of month wrap up. I didn't read too many books this month, um, but I did read some quality books. I did read some books that were not so great. We'll talk about that, but I did read some quality books. I finished up my reread of my favorite series of all time. I read quite a few. I probably like half if I'm trying to do quick math in my head here. Like half of the books that I read were new to me authors, which it's really not hard to do these days. It's just there are so many books and so many authors. And when you read like backlist and it's just this whole, it's the whole thing. So my totals for the month, I only read 10 books. Like I said, um, I read eight of those were off of my TBR. So like A plus for me. Let's see, where are we at? We need to talk about five books. Okay. So yeah, I read five books for the second half of the month. And I will say that these first two books that I'm going to talk about for sure have been on my list for a minute. They have been highly anticipated from me. Um, and I finally got to them and I'm like really happy that I did. They definitely lived up to my anticipation. The first one being Until I Get You by Claire Contreras. You guys, dual POV, over the top hero. He falls first. It's like a whole big thing for him. There is, do check trigger warnings um, because there is sexual abuse. It is a hockey romance, which I will talk about that in a second. And I think that it is um, talked about as a dark romance, which I will talk about here. I don't typically look at this as a dark romance. I think that this is a romance that has dark themes in it. But I don't necessarily view this as a dark romance because the actual romance, that is not dark. And I feel like dark romances typically are your love interest. Like that is dark. That That is not dark. The hockey romance part. So if you are somebody who is, like who doesn't care what they read like me, like I'm not going to go out and look for sports romances typically um, unless I was to do like a, a video centered around that and I needed to read more. Um, but I'm not going to shy away because it is a sports romance. That being said, if you are somebody who does shy away from a sports romance, this might be a really good book for you because it is not really centered around hockey or Lila, one of our main characters, is really into soccer. It's not centered around that. Yes, there are, there may be a scene that is on the ice or on the soccer field, but it's not you know how some sports romances are heavily centered around the sport? It's not. Um, yes, it's mentioned, but we are more focused on our two main characters, which are Lila and Lachlan. And whew, this one sucked me in from the beginning. I absolutely loved it. Lila has got a past. She is basically a hermit at the point that we meet her, but is trying to break out of her confines a little bit. She wears baggy clothes. She doesn't wear any makeup. She tries not to, she tries to less than blend in with the crowd. She tries to like be non-existent and it is her last year of college and she's kind of like, I have not only less than a year, but I have months left until I can get out of this town and move on with my life. So she's starting to come out a little bit, which is where she meets Lachlan. Lachlan is your typical jock male counterpart who gets what he wants, always is never in the need for a lady's attention, is pretty much your playboy. And he sees Lila and Lila wants nothing to do with him, which let's face it, Lachlan is not very much used to, but there's something about him. She definitely gives him tit for tat. She's right there giving him whatever he's giving her. And he likes that. He is very intrigued by this girl, and there is definitely a chemistry there. It is also very unlike Lachlan for to do this. He's never pursued a girl before because he's never had to. So this twist of events is very new to him, but he definitely 
but he definitely falls first and falls really hard for Lila. But they end up having to have kind of like a secret relationship because Lila had to deal with some extreme things in her past and now, like I said, is kind of in hiding. Um, she has a a stalker who abused her in the past and it even hurt uh, people that she's loved. So she's staying away. She's even taking um, online classes so that she's not out in the community because the person that is stalking her has friends in very high places in this community. She's just biding her time so that she can leave. And in the meantime, she doesn't mean to, but she falls in love with Lachlan. And then some things happen and she up and disappears and Lachlan's been looking for her for three years, which is where we are now present time. The synopsis on the back says like he's out for revenge. He's going to, you know, he she took all these things from him. Basically she took herself away from him and now he wants to get back at her for it but that I will say I felt like was um a dirty ploy to get somebody to read this book because it's not at all what that is like it's he's not out for revenge he literally just wants the love of his life back in his life yes he's angry yes he wants her back yes he wants her to pay but not in the revenge type it's I'm I you took you away from me. Like, I want you back. So, like, that I felt like was, no. Anyway, it is a great story. I implore you to read it. I ended up giving this one a 4.5. I gave it a three stars for Spice. I would say that I, I, I felt their chemistry for sure. I feel like I felt more chemistry from these two and their connection from these two. When we jumped ahead three years, like I said in the beginning, it this book grabbed me book line and sinker like I just I couldn't put this one down when I had to put it down I was constantly thinking about them Lachlan Duke is um he's definitely a boy that you want in your corner for sure very possessive of his woman and I just I, I loved it like I said 4.5 three stars for spice it is a must read and that rolls us right into my next book which whoo I don't know why I waited this long. I definitely want to jump into more books by this author. This one, again, drew me in from the beginning. You got a new book boyfriend here. We're talking about Hawk by Jesse Hall. Oh my god. Uh, the point of view is all in our main female character, Nicole. This is forced proximity. There is the cheating trope in this one. This is an enemies to lovers, although when I say enemies to lovers, I don't mean like typical enemies to lovers. It's more of Nicole doesn't want to like Hawk. She really wants to hate him, but she can't. There is this opposites attract magnetic pull between these two where I saw the connection with Lyle and Lachlan from Until I Get You, but I saw it more in the three-year jump. This is completely different. Like the chemistry between Nicole and Hawk is <laughs> just, it's magnetic. Like it is there from the beginning. I absolutely fell in love with both of these characters. I think Nicole is one of those great heroines that you love to read about. She is kind of stuck in this rut of a life that she's in, but she it's like she knows subconsciously she's in this rut, but she's just going through the motions. Like at some point, I will be happy, but right now I'm just going to be, you know, I'll fake it till I make it kind of thing. I have it really good, so why complain, right? Like, but Nicole is living with her longtime boyfriend. She, they've been together for a really long time. Patrick is just like he's really good on paper but he's not all he's cracked up to be. He um, is the only person that she's ever slept with. <laughs> to say he's lacking in the sexual gratification area is, well, that's just putting it mildly. I mean, the man, he don't know how to do, he, he just don't know how to use anything. He, he, he ain't got no stamina. He, he's only out for numero uno. Um, you know, Nicole is just really getting the short end of the stick. But what Patrick fails to mention, Nicole, is that they're about to get a new roommate. And Nicole finds it out when she literally walks into their spare bedroom while Hawk is having sex with somebody else. Hawk 
is an ex-convict. He's just gotten out of prison, and she never heard anything about him. Patrick's never talked about him, so she is just, like, flabbergasted of why this man is living in their house. And why do I want to be around him so much? Now, Nicole works from home. She is trying to become um, a literary agent or, uh, like, an editor, and so she does minor editing from home. So she is at home a lot, but she also works a few nights a week at a local bar that they have in town just to kind of get out and have that adult communication. And it basically is more her speed because Patrick's family is very wealthy and very to do in town. Um, they're kind of like the gods of the town. And Nicole is really just not like that. She is more laid back. And I think that's why her and Hawk first have like that connection that they do have because they are kind of cut from the same cord. The Hawk is also at home throughout the day. So they have a lot of time to spend together. And that's where their connection, they have a lot in common, but also they're very, very attracted to each other. And what Patrick can't give to Nicole, Hawk is more than willing to give to Nicole. I just, I absolutely love the story. Hawk is one of those characters who's got many, many dimensions. And the more that you read and the more that you learn about him, you just, you can't help but like want to know more and can't help but feel for him and root for him and everything. He's just, he is one of those lost souls that you you just can't help but love absolutely loved it five stars four stars for spice these two together are just they were amazing i definitely recommend reading it i will definitely be reading more by dusty hall and very soon let's move on to my next book which was wrong by Jana afton this is a shorter book so this was a very quick read um there is this is the first book i think it's like a four book interconnected series this is an age gap i believe it's like 12 years 12 or 13 years so this follows luke and sophie this is i would say like a meet cute but it's honestly like it had me laughing out loud in many circumstances so sophie is a 21 year old senior in college at the university of pennsylvania she's about to graduate she is working as a barista at a local coffee shop and she is crushing hard on this one man that comes in in a business suit every single tuesday orders the same thing she has really dirty filthy sexual fantasies about him learns through a phone call that she overhears that his name is Luke. I have a crush on a customer. I'm never going to see him outside of my work. So whatever, it, you know, it is what it is. My boyfriend doesn't have to know. I think that they've been together for a little bit of time, her and her boyfriend. The thing with Sophie is she is a 21-year-old virgin. She has put off having sex uh, because her mother had her as a teenager. Her grandparents ended up raising her and she didn't want to follow in her mother's footpath so she decides that abstinence is the best way to make sure that I don't follow that path but now she is you know about to graduate college and it's time like I've been dating this guy for a little bit of time he seems really cool my last boyfriend of two years turned out to be gay so you know I mean what am I really waiting for like let's just let's just get it over let's just get over with however I'm going to be smart about it and I'm going to go get birth control because, you know, let's be responsible. However, Sophie was not prepared to be in that paper cloth gown, heat up in stirrups when her ultimate hot crush, Dr. Luke, walks in to be the examining doctor at the student clinic to give her birth control. And she is a little bit mortified, but I love the way, like, in her head she's like, I mean, I could walk out of here and go with another doctor, or I could just suck it up and do it. And she decides to, I mean, how mortifying could this be? But she decides to suck it up and let the man examine her. I mean, like, I give props. I don't know if I could do it. It was absolutely hilarious. But then she keeps running into Luke. And with the way that he talks to her, you can tell, like, he is a little um like protective a little bit but then the more encounters that they have it's more of like this possessive obsession kind of thing which I wasn't like I wasn't ready for it but I absolutely loved it the blurb did mention that this was a filthy book but like you know 
I, I can't always put complete stock in blurbs, and I'm going to tell you, like, this was a filthy book. Like, Dr. Luke has, um, I mean, like, man's got a filthy mouth. Like, he likes, he likes the way that he likes it, and he ain't afraid to go after what he likes. He's also an ass man, if you catch my drift. It was just, I mean, like, this was a good time. There was not any unnecessary sex scenes, but the sex scenes were definitely hot and steamy and just, yes like i was here for it i think if the book would have been longer then we could have seen a little bit more of like i luke is definitely dominant and we would have seen more of that dom sub relationship i think he definitely got some dom tendencies i mean i was absolutely here for it this was just a really fun read i absolutely loved it i wanted to read an age gap book this checked that off but it also checked off many other things for me i really enjoyed this one I gave this one a four stars and I gave it a three stars for Spice, which brings me to my next book, which was The 16th Need by Callie Reed. I finally read it. It's been on my TBR for a couple months now. I've been telling Mandy and Jessica from Bestie Book Reviews that I was going to read something by Callie Reed and I finally did it. Dual POV, second chance romance. This follows Samson or Sam and Sable. Sable is the oldest of four. They live with their druggy mother in a trailer park in a very small town where everybody knows them and instead of helping out they just throw dirty looks their way and say that these girls can't possibly be good they have to be just like their mother like nobody gives them the benefit of the doubt people in school treat them like crap they must be just like their mother and they've lived in a small town their entire life so i mean they're used to it but these girls have an incredibly thick skin which i absolutely admired from them. I will say that the, the writing, like how you read, I, I really enjoyed her writing. She definitely knows how to tell a story. She definitely knows how to create these characters. Like you definitely feel what these characters are feeling. Samson and Sable, they knew each other. They've known each other. I mean, they've, they've both lived in the same town all these years, but they never ran around in the same group of they never ran around in the same group. Sable really doesn't go out much. I mean, all the girls have to have a job anyway because they can't count on their mother. So they basically have been raising themselves. Um, they pay the bills. They can't, they cannot rely on their mother who really they don't even see the mother because their mother is either out with men, getting drunk, doing drugs, or sleeping. But Samson and Sable are pushed together because Samson is not doing so well in his lit English class. And his teacher says, hey, you need a tutor, and I know somebody that can tutor you, and that tutor would be Sable. Through tutoring, Samson realizes that she is not the person that he thought that she was, or that anybody thinks that she is, and her sisters are not that either, and he starts to really form a relationship with her, and then he falls first. He definitely falls first for her, and all he wants to do is protect her. He just wants to be around her he wants to he wants to make her life better but Sable I mean like look at where she's grown up in yes she has her three sisters and I think she would be far worse off if she didn't have her sisters to take care of um, and they take care of her but I mean you you can only handle so much and she will not allow herself to feel the feelings that she feels for Sam so when he goes off to college and being a year older than her when he goes off to college she basically like ghosts him and now he's back from college and she has to deal with those ramifications of well now now i see him again and my feelings haven't gone away and he's saying his feelings haven't gone away and like what do we do one thing i really enjoyed about the dual pov is that from stable's point of view we are in the now we see what we're in the present like the now what's happening now um him being back from college and her having to relive all these feelings whereas Sam's point of view is all in the past so we learn like how they met each other how they became friends how they became more than friends and what led up to the present time so we get to see the history through Sam which I really really enjoyed the chemistry is definitely there with these two there is a bit of that angstiness that we all love and crave in our books I will say that I just Ultimately, I wanted a little bit more, and I'm not quite for sure what I wanted more, but I would have maybe, I would have liked to have had maybe more of an epilogue, a couple of the characters, I would have liked to have seen what happened. It, it just kind of ends for me, and 
I'm just, I was a little bit curious about a few things. So because of that, I ended up giving this one a four stars and I gave it a one star for spice. Which brings us to my last book, which was Lie to Me by Molly McAdams. First read by Molly McAdams. Um, this one is a dual POV. It follows Reed and Emma. And guys, I I tried with this one, but I it was not for me. 99% of the time, I was rolling my eyes at this book. I just, I couldn't. I couldn't and it took me a long time to get through this book because I just could not I would start reading it and I I have to stop because I was just getting so frustrated with the main character um, our main character Emma her and I we didn't connect did I feel bad for Emma absolutely this chick like she has been through some shit I don't think any child, any person should have to go to the things that Emma went through in life. She had a piece of shit for a mother, and I would have liked to have seen um, a little bit more uh, punishment for her mother. Her mother is very much like Sable's mother from the last book. A druggie would sell her body for those drugs and would even be willing to sell her child's body for those drugs and allowed many people to take advantage of her daughter, including crooked cops. So there is this huge thing with Emma on how she doesn't like cops and she just doesn't like anybody. The thing that I think my one of my biggest disconnects was that when she was she was 16 her mother just up and left and so she was on her own from that time she decides to move to new york which is one of the few places that that she her and her mother have never been and she makes a life for herself she gets a job that she enjoys until something happens that prompts her to flee and go back to where her grandmother was okay this is the thing you're on your own from 16 it's now 10 years later so in that 10 year span that you have gotten your GED, you've created a life for yourself, you've gotten a job that you like, you've not met anybody who's been nice to you, you've not made any friends. Also, in those 10 years, you've never contacted your grandmother who's always been there to help you. I just find that hard to believe that she's never had a friend and she's never met anybody good. Because now it's 10 years later, she has fled back to her grandmother. When her mother left her at 16, she could have gone to her grandmother, but she didn't. She made a life for herself, but now she's back. But then she also realizes that her mother had another daughter and left that daughter, a very young girl, with her grandmother. And in this small town, her grandmother is friends with a lot of first responders. Some first responders happen to be cops. And Reed is a cop. So they have this very tumultuous relationship. Reed is extremely patient with Emma. And it's just, it was just, I don't know. Like the premise was really good, but I could not connect with Emma. I just, I, I couldn't understand a lot of the things that she did. Yes, I took into consideration the horrific life that she had. People just constantly trying to take advantage of her. And ultimately, I just, I couldn't get behind it. I I didn't like it. I was so happy for it to be over. Um, I just, I didn't like it. Uh, I gave it a two stars. I gave it a two stars for Spice. And those are all the books that I read in the second half of August. Way to end it on a dud. I don't know. Maybe you would like it. So you'll have to let me know if you've read it and what you think about it. All right. Let's do my little wrap up. 10 books in total for the month of August. My top five books were Until I Get You, Hawk, Dismount, Between Never and Forever, and The 16th Need. My most surprising read, I'm going with Hawk because it just, it blew me out of the water. I was a little scared because I've seen a little bit of hype around it. Um, I guess like maybe the end of last year or towards the beginning of this year. I don't know. There was some hype around it, so I was a little scared, but man, it was amazing. I definitely recommend you got to read it. My biggest letdown, is it a surprise? It is Lie to Me 
it has definitely lied to me. Be sure to check out what I'm excited to read for in September. It should be up before this video. If it is, I will link it for you in a card. I will link it for you down below. If not, I will come back and link it for you down below. Okay, let me know in the comments what your favorite read of the month was and what your biggest letdown of the month was. And I will catch you guys in the next video. If you like this video, you know what to do. Please like, comment, and subscribe before you leave. Until next time, happy reading. Bye.